hours before the event, guys. Um, I'm exploding with excitement. You don't see me. You don't really see me smiling right now. I'm on public trains, but um, I'm very, very excited. Very, very excited for, for what you guys are about to witness in a few hours. Stay tuned. What's up, y'all? Just got off the bus. About to meet up with my brother at the spot. I'm a couple blocks away from K and A, Kensington and Allegheny. Just the real trenches in Philly. You know what I mean? This is a uh, this is a legendary moment right now in the in, in the making. You feel me? You guys get to see me before before it all happens. Um, we're like two hours away from the event right now. I'm very excited. I'm very hype. And um, I'll check in with you guys later. Be safe. Okay, so we're about to go to the event. My niggas pulling pulling up. We're pulling up in the pedophile van slash the Bang Bros. This is really not even the Bang Bros. Is it the Bang Bros, John? I don't know. This should look crazy. I hope you don't got a bag of candy and puppies in there. Anyway. Very excited. Oh, that, that looks dangerous. Look at that, that plywood. Anyway, look. This is before the fame, y'all. Soak it in. This is before nigga blew up. You feel me? Let's go. I'm going to show y'all what the event looks like inside. What'd you hear about the event? The internet, bro. Instagram. Cool. <coughs> I said, damn, they brought... They, Kato, do you know where you at? We on Tioga right now. Gang. I, I ain't gonna lie, I know what it is. He got a, uh, they got, he got a discount on the, uh, the hourly. On the room? Hell yeah. <laughs> I ain't mad at this shit. Damn, they got us waiting out here like groupies. Damn, Kato, you got us waiting like groupies. That's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> nigga yeah, got you should be here by, uh, I'm about to think about the Drake's and the Rihanna's and the Chris Brown's and whoever, and Little Wayne's and the baby, Little Baby, whoever's, whoever's that person. Bro, that's us coming up on a, on a, on an independent level. It's so much, it's so much talent. It's a few whack motherfuckers here and there, but it's enough talent, bro, in our city, Allentown, Norristown, New York, Maryland, the whole East Coast, for us to link up on different sets. It don't gotta be all eight of us in the studio, but you might find something to do with him. You and me might do something. Y'all might, or you and me can might do something like. Let's uh, let's try to stay connected after this. I know motherfuckers got lives, people got babies on the way, and felonies, and college, and all oh, types of shit, shit, right? But man, I'm trying. I'm really trying to bang out hits, bro. I swear to God, like I was just talking to them about the law of attraction. I've been yeah. seeing some weird shit this last year, bro. Is wild. Weird shit. I've been bro. seeing it too. Like as his brother, I've been watching, and we've been watching each other, bro. bro. It's weird. Shit, and I come from nothing, so to be like. Certain environments, like I'm like, man, I see a little, I see that just that crack of the opportunity for motherfuckers to make it, but it's got to be on some unity shit. I can't do it though. You feel awesome me? I got too. some producers in the city I'm working with, but I want to expand that shit. That's a big fact too, and awesome shit, bro. It's like you know, we're like the new age, the new digital age, bro. So like, you're a producer, I send you track stems on the beat. You fit like sauce it up, send yeah. it to him, and they can make a song. You know what I'm saying? Right now, it's like you know we even have to always be in the studio, even if we're all the way from like apart, bro. Yeah, and you got to be greedy work, about bro. it. If you guys got ASCAP or Distro Kids or Song Trust yes. or Sound Exchange set up, facts, then facts. we set them split sheets up correctly. Correct, yo, speak to any fucking producer in the city that I, that I work with. I'm like, they be like, yo, this is crazy. People rip rip my beats all the time. I'm I'm one of the only people that be like, yo, you getting fifty on on pub and fifty on writing. Why not? It's your record too. And then that gives a motherfucker fucking more energy to want to push that song when Definitely. it comes out. Yeah, so I was talking with the guys about this out front, and I'm just so curious. Especially mentioning that this is year 12 for you and, and you're having this massive like trajectory that's taking you to that, to that next level, right? I started reading about the law of attraction within the last year and a half and I think the biggest regret that I have up to this point is that the things that, 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 that I put out into the universe were so small because I manifested them all and I'm like, damn, I could have done so much more. So can you speak to your relationship with the law of attraction, how that's helped you in your way. And if you don't even believe in that, then can you at least speak to our doubt as us as artists, man? I can speak for a lot of us when this shit gets so like it feels like this is not happening, it's impossible, it's so it's a mountain to climb. Can you please like just speak to the to persistence, continuing on, having faith, manifesting? I'm gonna be honest, bro. I think everything has to come from your personal drive of just loving what you do at the end of the day. Because if you're out here looking for specific results, right? I meet a lot of artists and producers who are like, you know, my goal is to make 
you know, a million dollars this year, or my goal is to get signed to a major label this year. If you're chasing those kinds of moments, nine times out of ten, I would say almost ten times out of ten, you're going to be disappointed. Because yeah. shit never goes according to plan. It's never going to go the way that you anticipate, right? There's always going to be bumps in the road. Yeah. And so, especially in the music business, I think you have to just love what you do and just be obsessed with the process of making music. And once you do that, right, I think that's when the law of attraction kicks in. Because people see that you are someone who is passionate about what you do and they want to be a part of that. They want to start working with you. They want to be a part of your shit because that's that's the energy that attracts other people to you, you know? If people see that you're just out here like trying to achieve short-term goals or unrealistic things, they're just like, oh, whatever, like it's, it's a hobby for him or he, yeah. he doesn't know what he's doing, you know what I mean? But people want to be around energy that is inspiring yeah, and motivating passionate. and passionate, yeah. you know, they want to be a part of that. So I think it all starts with that. Thank you. This is like a, a, a more of a character type of question. In the industry, when, like you start to meet all these people on your way up, and you want to, you want to, you want to get money, right? You want, you also have morals, so you have that to uphold. But you want to do business deals, you don't want to have fallouts. But you go through the weird shit that happens in the industry, weird people. Can you give us a, a bit of game on 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 how to know when this fucking artist or executive is just toxic? Stay away. You can deal with the bullshit of this person keep working. Uh, you know, like, because you know, it's, it's, loyalty is so rare. They speak on that in the industry. Yeah, I'm going to speak on that, and then I'm going to let Jason speak on it, too. But, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's really, really important to just trust your intuition. You know? And there are those people in the industry. You're right. But at the end of the day, I, I really just gravitate towards people who seem genuine and don't ask me to pay them for anything up front, right? I, I'm very much a believer in like, eat what you kill. Yeah, yeah. Everyone on my team is the same way. Like, I don't pay anyone's and like uh, a monthly salary or I, like everyone on my team, yeah. you gotta be hungry to want this shit as much as me. And given the point that I'm at where I'm at in my career, if you're doing your job and you're doing it well, we all make money together. You know, that's not an issue. But you have to bring something to the table, and at the same time, I have to know what I offer to them. And I think that's, that's how you create a fruitful partnership where everyone is happy and everyone has a job and like we all eat at the same time, you know? Follow up, follow up question real quick. I'm sorry, guys. Should I be worried as a, because I'm, I'm honestly, sometimes, I'm, I'm small fish, I literally recently just got in, let into one or two rooms, I ain't even name drop, one or two rooms, and I find myself sometimes afraid of like offending people or, or getting blackballed, but man, some people could be fucking dicks behind the scenes and super lovable on camera, and it's like, you know, how do, how do I not get blackballed, should I not be worried about it, is that a real concern? I mean... This is hard to answer because I think there's levels to it, right? I think there is such a thing now as like getting canceled, unfortunately. And that could come from an industry perspective. It could come from like fans and just like saying the wrong thing. Um, but I think people are also forgiving at the same time. So if you acknowledge your mistakes and you're a genuine person, then I think people will forgive you for it. So I don't really believe in the whole blackball thing okay. because who are they blackballing you from? Like, they can't blackball you from your fans. Right, like, right, right. You know, only you can fuck that up if, if you do or say the wrong thing, but like, nobody else can take that from you, you know? So, um, Jason, you have any thoughts on there's no one answer again, right? But there's a couple things that I guide myself on and it's worked. I do good business and if, if we've never dealt before, I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. Have I got a burden with that? Absolutely. But as my reputation and what I can achieve in the business has risen, 
the respect kind of comes with that as well. So people know, in particular because I'm a lawyer, like the last person you want to fuck over is a guy with a bunch of tools in his toolbox that can make your life really difficult. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Hell yeah. So like, I've always put that energy out. I try to get all my clients to the extent possible to do good business. Absolutely. And after doing it, like same kind of time, 10, 12 years, it comes back to you, bro. And people realize that you're upstanding and you want to do good business. The other thing that I'll recommend is like, this industry is so low key, right? I can wear this into a boardroom where I couldn't get away with that when I was a trial lawyer. Like, if you're not suited and tied up, like, that's inexcusable. I can walk into a million dollar meeting wearing what I am and leave out with that check. So, what does that mean? Do your homework. Yeah. This is not light shit that we're dealing with. This can make your kids rich at some point if you do this the right way. So I say that to only say, do your homework. If you're going into a room with people that you've never met, figure those people out before you walk into that room. Figure out the dynamic. What's the last five deals they've done? What are the variables if you can get that information? If you don't know somebody, ask somebody. You know what I mean? If you, if I have another colleague that I do a lot of business with and I've not met this executive, before I go in there, I'm doing my homework. What's this guy about? What kind of energy does he bring? What's the last couple deals they've done? You know what I mean? Because if you were doing a million dollar real estate deal, if you were buying a building for a million dollars, you wouldn't do that shit without sending your inspectors in there. Right. You wouldn't do that without searching the title and making sure the deed was clean. You're doing what's called due diligence. And just because we wear jeans in the boardroom doesn't mean that you should not address that meeting in the same vein as if you were doing a million dollar real estate deal or you were taking a million dollar bank loan or anything else that comes with the formalities that that level of business usually dictates. So I suggest you ask who you can, you do your homework, and you make sure you're as informed as possible when you step into those rooms. It's a small community in the music business world, so like everyone kind of knows each other, and so if you have a bad reputation, or you do bad business, or you fuck people over, like the word travels. It's high school. Yeah, basically, <laughs> it's high school. Just, you know, yeah. <laughs> And then I'll, uh, I'll package it into a music video. Um, so here's my music video for No Love, just 60 seconds of that. I got I got tons of content out, bro. Tons of content, so I really like it. Oh, shit. Uh, no Love, let's get to it. Check, Aside from 
the videos and the singles, a big thing that I've been doing is my freestyle bag. I got, I got a lot of them lyrical bars. They don't want three, four, five minutes on a song. So I'll fuck around and, and I've recorded this, edited myself, and I'll give them something like this at Right Philly, which is, I know I'm going to do some bars. Yeah. So uh, this is like a freestyle bag. <laughs> Think about being raised in a place that is sinking Making decisions that I hate just to make it a living The industry ain't what it seems And I hate that it isn't Look at Drake while he's spitting Praying someday I could be in that position That's the vision Always focused, strictly business, no emotion That's the motion Praying one day I could buy my mama home no more plastics ever wearing styrofoam I'm blowing up like a time and bomb I write this song for every fan that chose to ride along Supporting me through my decisions whether right or wrong And when I'm gone, carry on this fight So many of us feel Alright, so I'm gonna put the freestyles out That helps me get those bars off and those stories off Without flooding my, uh, my catalog too much For the shit that isn't really records And then last but not least you feel me? My guy right here, that's my brother. Well, you know, we'll, we'll, we put ourselves on. We threw a party this last week, and this is where I get the... Right here, it's Jordan the Bill. Make some fucking noise. Come on. I got the full 17-minute, 20-minute performance online, but this is just the two-minute for right now. singles, everything, bro. Um, I want to work with as many of y'all as I can, because he going to go on to the next city and keep doing his tour, but we going to stay here in the city, so let's lock yeah, in. Sure. But I need, I need game, bro. Hey, man, first of all, I think you're doing a lot of things right, so let me just give you credit on that. You know, I think that you are approaching it how an artist needs to approach it in this modern era of music, where you're not just doing one thing. You're not one-dimensional with it, right? Um, so honestly, I think, number one, it's a matter of you just finding that one record or that one freestyle that just goes viral and a lot of people start paying attention to what you're doing. the rest of the catalog, right? For the rest of the catalog, right? So that's just a matter of being consistent and doing it over and over and over, right? Now, the second thing is like, I would ask you, obviously you have these videos on YouTube and you're posting on Instagram, like how much, what, what other things are you doing to get it out there? Right, good, good question. Um, I do a lot of media in the city, so um, I started recording just, just bullshit in my own little podcast, and it got, uh, we just get so wild in there that it, it caught a little traction in the neighborhood, and I, I'll get on other people's platforms, I'll do like, um, I'm a camera boy. If you got a podcast, I'm gonna go interview on there as long as you're not, you're not crazy. Somebody try to get me on the podcast one time. Like Illumin exposing Illuminati, and they started talking reckless about people. And I was like, the footage got fucked up. Thank God, there's a Lord that loves me. 
But like most, you know, most times I, I do media in the city. Uh, collaborations are big. But, but really, man, I'm, I'm honestly investing a lot in my marketing, my ads, my Instagram ads. I put a couple dollars there. When I was on, on the sound advice over the webinar we did last year, I connected with your folks that, that do the marketing and, and took their course, their seven step course. Yeah. So I'm doing what I can, man. Trying to really make a name for my. This shit is hard. I'm on my eight mile shit right now. I swear to God, man. Bro, like when I leave this event, the shit, the shit's real. Bro. Believe me, believe me. Yeah. I, mean, I could just tell based on how you came up here today and the creativity that you had to not just play music but play some of your content and give me like just bite-sized pieces of it. Um, I can tell that you're doing all the right things. Believe me. Um, I think it's just. I honestly think it's just a matter of time and consistency of doing yeah. that over and over and over. And I know that your production value as far as the videos and the, the concepts that you come up with, I think that can be executed better, but I know you're going to get there too. So I'm not even tripping about that part, you know, because we all start from somewhere and then over time, you know, hopefully we invest more and more into that side of it. But I think you're doing all the right things. I appreciate you, man. bro. Thank you for this event, man. You're, you're super creative and... Like, I'm telling y'all, you, you guys need to collaborate, everyone in this room. Like, the fact that y'all are all in the same city, and you all make music, and you're all talented, man, like, the possibilities are endless as far as where that can go. Thanks. Thank you. Yes, sir. Clap it up. See where it's going, bro. And the fact that I recognize your name before you even got here. Yeah. Says something. I was gonna ask you too. I was gonna ask. I didn't know if you did or didn't, but bro. Absolutely. I swear to God, loyalty runs deep, and I remember this on the way up, bro. Yeah. Yeah. So.